is a nice item. What is it? Sent to me by one of our fans on our website, Chuck Hilliard from Iowa. Big Parsons sent me of lovely stuff, which is many of the things he invented himself, which you'll see on display. And this is the first one he sent me, which was well, the first one I unwrapped. He called it flip flop or something like that. It does two things it flip flops from that side and flips to that side, but it also spins very nicely on a flat surface. And these are um, like bus tickets and, and, and playing cards and things. And if you are a collector of cards, you know what I mean. You've probably got albums of them. These ones actually are little party games, which are little quizzes, like which did the US post office zap the populace for the first July the 1st, 1963, or something like that. And then the answer's on the back. But he makes these things here, which spin this way. You flip it like that and turn it the other way and it flips the other way too as well, which is very pretty, a very nice idea. And this is an even prettier one. I thought this is my favorite because it's got such lovely patterns to it. That's a nice one. And then flip it like that and look at these patterns here. Isn't that beautiful? Very, very pretty effect like that. And then he made hundreds of these according to the, the bits of um, news he sent me in his, in his letters. And he sort of to, to, taking it to another dimension, as it were, by not just finishing with just eight or so in a ring, but making about two dozen of them and making them a spiral. So there's the, there's the last one and here's the first one. When I turn it like this, it'll spiral inwards like this. It would get deeper and deeper and deeper and more three dimensional and turned into a kind of bowl thing. He said if you're really good at um, launching this, it takes a bit of practice apparently, you hold that one like that, you let it spin like that and then release it and it automatically does a, a spinning action. It spins like that as well, so very nice. But to do a beautiful long spiral rather than just uh, that number of cards and nothing more is very, very progressive. So he takes an idea takes it as far as you can, gets a bit bored with it, and comes up with a new dimension to it. Isn't that pretty? And here's another one where he's done the same sort of thing. It's, these are tickets for admit one, and uh, tickets, etc. This is when you're organising fates or, or, um, or auctions or something. And he's made them so that you can push them like that, and make them stick up like that, boom, boom, boom. and enjoy the fact that it's become a tower, and then push it down like that. Back, 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 back. That and took the other side flat, 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 and here's another one. And then he thought I'd do something else with it. So what he's done is he's made one where you can't flatten it anymore because it's been glued. Make a nice bowl there. Look at that. It's got a hole in it, so it looks almost like a plant pot. So I suppose you could put earth in it, but not water because it's just paper. Well, unless you lacquered it, of course. You know, but that's that solid. That won't that won't flatten anymore. Whereas these ones flatten. Just done with loads and loads of tickets. Goodness me, clever man. Then he moved across the plastics and got himself a plastic 3D printing machine. Came up with these extraordinary things. These are sort of um, lots of little rings which are joined in one particular line along here. And when I wave it against my shirt or this way, it flips like that. It's quite pretty actually. He calls it riffling or something like that. It's got a very soft sound, but these other ones are a bit longer noisier than that. So that's nice, but this is a slightly more robust one and does a, an action a bit more Oh, that's better. I'll do a bit of this towards the camera. And a bit of a thing. I also found it spun quite nicely too when you when you put it on the when you put it on the, on, the, on the table and I see it was this side down. That's right. That's right. right. And then it spins and makes a little suffering sound. And the best example of these is this one here, which is hexagonal shaped. I think this is very nice indeed. Where's the where's the joint line? Oh, there we are. This is beautiful actually. That's very nice. Look at that. Oh boy. Very, very pretty patterns. And riffling and riffling and riffling as well. Beautiful. Chuck, you're a genius. These are just superb items. So that was a, one of the plastic moulding ideas. This is an even better one, I think. These are pieces which each one is individually made, but they're somehow joined together, well they're not because they're 3D printed like this, but it's got that bevel, each has got that bevel, so when they're inside each other, they can't, they can only go so far. So we push it out as far as it goes, and then it flattens just about. What I like about it is the noise it gets. Wow, and here's an even better sound. He, this one, he's fixed a little sort of spiral to it like that, so it goes like that, and then it trips like that, and when it makes a sound like that, it reminds me of that theory about the pulsating universe. One universe to another, back and forth like that. That noise is... Whoa, 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 whoa! 
superb. Then he had another go and made another experiment. This time he did it with putting a string through it. So this opens up like that. But the string goes right the way through, there's a double string, which is just asking you to make it into one of those button and thread spinners, which I remember playing with as a kid years and years and years ago. So let's see if it works, shall we? Button and thread with something that Chuck's designed. Confirm. Here we are. And a bit the other way. And sloop that noise as well coming out again. Extraordinary. These are such fun, aren't they? Here's another little thing he mentioned, which is much, much simpler, but I like it because it's, you know, it's original. He's got lots of cats in his house, apparently, about six of them. They love chasing after him, so what he did was, to make it a little more enticing, is he attached bits of strings and elastic bands to his ankles, and they walked around the house flipping this around, and the cats couldn't help but rush after him. And um, I'd love to have a go with this, actually, on the outside. I think it's got to go a long way when you stretch it like that. I'll just fire it up and move like that. No, let's make it a little bit higher than that. He says if you don't, if you're not too careful, you'll catch your, your fire. Oh, is that all right? Oh, yes, that's, that's fell very nicely. Beautiful. So, that's a very nice one, but it needs to be done outdoors, I think. And then he somehow, for some reason or other, got hold of um, bismuth. I don't know what it's to do with bismuth, but he said, did you know that bismuth is the most extraordinary element with wonderful properties, which he hasn't gone into, but he has shown some of them. So I went through one of my books, which I bought recently, on the elements, and in the corner here, they show bismuth looking very, very interesting and multicultural, multi, multi coloured, multicultural too as well. Look at the example, i will put it beside, beside that. So you can get these extraordinary colours as it oxidises in the air. When it's completely naked, it's almost that sort of colour, like that. In fact, he did actually make a little, a little figure here, which he included in it, a little skull here, made of business as well. But these pieces are really beautiful, but they are very fragile. They fragment very quickly, and if you don't handle them extremely carefully, they all start coming apart. And also, when you're actually making this, which he did in a, in a large camping uh, pot, at about 500 degrees, he says it's then molten, and these things float on the top, because rather like water, they, the, the, the solid form is, is lighter than the liquid form, which is very strange, not, not heavier. So a lovely little thing to play with. Bismuth, I've got to have another look at you, because I don't think I've ever quite taken it in. Then the last thing he sent me is something which will involve water. Well, you like water, don't you? So, and I certainly do. He's made something here from a 3D printer, which has got lots of little holes in it. This thing here. So now we get and show something, a property of water, which is not that well known, but I have seen a few things, but this is the best version I've ever seen. So let's get some water up on the table, shall we? This is a nice thing, isn't it? Look at this. There's a bit of water in there, and I've got a glass, and as you expect, when it's full of water, it'll just pour out like that. And if I do it slowly or fast, it doesn't matter, it'll still pour out. When you hold it like that, there's nothing left inside. When you put this thing inside, by contrast, now look at this. You put that in there like that, it floats, because it's lighter than. You push it down to the bottom, and look at the fizzing. That's the water going down and displacing the air, which is then, that's right, it's at the bottom now. And now let's see what happens when we lift it up, full of water, full of water, and turn it upside down quickly. What? Where's the water? Well, it is there, but it's being held up by this skin called water. Oops, it? There we are. It's broken through and allows it to come out. You've got to do a bit of that. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Quite extraordinary. The best version I've ever come across of showing how water forms a skin. And in this case, the skin's not nearly strong enough to hold it up. This one, it completely entraps it and can't, it can't come out until you give it a good hit. So. Chuck, you really are a hero. You give me some marvellous new stuff for my for my collection. And I think um, there's at least another half dozen things for me to go through and see if I can bring them up to the camera on another occasion. But these ones are absolutely incredible. I've had lots and lots and lots of fun over the last three or four days, or the last week and a half actually, that I've been playing with this stuff and enjoying them. So a huge thank you.